Greetings, friends. As always, it's an honor to welcome you back to Rick's Garage. What you see before you is my ATD bearing press kit. It's a very inexpensive kit. It costs less than $100. You can buy them on eBay. I posted a video on how to use this kit several years ago. I did it in two parts, part one and part two. It's been by far my most popular video. Uh, between part one and part two, there's been more than a million views. I've decided today to repost the video in one part, combining part one and part two. There have been some complaints that people will watch part one and can't find part two, or will come in on part two and want to see part one. So I've decided that in today's video, I'm going to repost that video all in one part. My processor is a lot stronger than it was in those days. The other reason for this video is I wanted to respond to some comments I've been getting. The biggest comment I get is people complain that they strip this jack screw. Well, the reason they strip the jack screw, one, they don't lubricate it. I always lubricate it whenever I use it. And number two, they use a power tool to crank it. Now these kits, like I said, are very inexpensive. They're not made for everyday use such as a repair shop. They're for the home user, occasional use only. So this thing will last many years. I've used it a number of times. What you gotta make sure is you keep your jack screw lubricated and use an ordinary ratchet to crank it. If you use one of these, you're gonna strip that thing every time. The other issue I want to address is I got some questions um, when I originally post a video on how to use this kit I concentrated mostly on how to use the kit I really didn't concentrate on the installation and removal of the steering knuckle for the purposes of that demonstration years ago I removed the steering knuckle completely from the car and clamped it in my bench vise well it is indeed possible to use this kit on the car you do not need to remove the knuckle and you do not need a bench vise you can do this repair on the car friends uh, as I just mentioned you can do this repair on the car now this is not a car that I'm going to be repairing does not need a wheel bearing I'm just using it for demonstration purposes now naturally when you do this repair, the first you're going to have to do is remove your caliper, remove your rotor, and remove your axle nut. Next, we're going to unbolt the ball joint, knock that out, and we're going to unbolt the tie rod end. Now, it may not be necessary to actually unbolt the tie rod end, but I like to do it because it makes it much easier to manipulate the steering knuckle. So with those things disconnected, now you can slip the axle out. Carefully slip your axle out of the steering knuckle. Now, to do the repair in the car, what I would do is once you've got the axle slipped out of the steering knuckle and tied off somewhere, I would go ahead and reconnect the ball joint. And I would even reconnect the uh, tie rod end. Now that makes it a nice stable uh, environment for you to actually do this repair on the car. So once you've finished pressing in the new bearing, then simply uh, slip your uh, ball joint back out, your tie rod end back out, and uh, slide your axle back into the steering knuckle. So basically that's what you would do to do this repair on the car. Remove your ball joint, your tie rod end, slip the axle out, and then once the axle is out and tied off, Put your ball joint back in, just snug it, and that'll hold everything nice and secure so you can go ahead and do the repair. When I did the repair, there was only one thing more holding the knuckle in place, and that was the strut. So I just unbolted the strut, took the whole thing out, and did it on the bench. Now, uh, one other thing to think about is if you do indeed have a uh, ABS system, you have to disconnect the ABS wire as well. This car does not, and the car I did in the original repair did not have ABS. So just to review, you remove your caliper, you remove your rotor, undo your lower ball joint, undo your tie rod end, slide the axle out, 
then put the ball joint back in temporarily to hold the thing secure so you can do the repair on the car. Now, if you wish to do it on a bench like I did, the only thing left remaining to take out is the strut bolts and an ABS wire if you happen to have that. The last thing I want to address, friends, is in the video you saw me break apart the bearing to get the hub out. Whoop, it moved. All right, that knocked out pretty easily. Very good. This is the hub that we just knocked out. If you look, it still has the race on it. And as a result of that, the inner part of the bearing is uh, stuck on the uh, hub. That's because it's a press fit. You saw me use an air chisel to zip the race off of the hub. There are special tools to remove that race from the hub. However, I've never purchased one because I've had very good success using my air chisel. I've been using my air chisel on axles since the 1970s, removing races, and it's worked very well. I was taught that by an old timer. And now it's funny, I'm an old timer. Now, if you do not have the means to get the race off of the hub, simply buy a new hub. They're not that expensive. I think this hub uh, went for about $35, $40. So uh, buy your new bearing and order a new hub with it. And then you don't have to worry about removing the race. Thanks, friends. That's all I needed to address for now. What's going to follow is the original video, only this time I'm combining part one and part two. I hope you enjoy. Hello, friends. Welcome once again to Rick's Garage. The subject matter of today's video is using one of those bushing kits to press front wheel bearings in and out of a steering knuckle. This video is going to begin with the knuckle already out of the car and on the bench. This is a uh, kit you'll need to uh, press out the bearing. Um, it has a bunch of uh, adapters and things to uh, fit the um, knuckle to uh, press this out. This is kit number um, ADT8625. Uh, um, it costs about $120 thereabouts. Um, if you don't want to invest in one of these, um, places like AutoZone will uh, rent you one. Um, they call it rental. What you have to do is put a deposit equal to the value of the kit. And then when you return the kit, they will give you your money back. As you can see, I have clamped the knuckle, what I've been calling the knuckle, into my bench vise and supporting the other end with some wood on my bench. Uh, the object here is to drive the hub out of the old bearing. We're going to damage the bearing, but we're replacing it anyway. But we've got to get that hub out of there, and there's no other way to do it. So what you'll need is a socket. Take one of my impact sockets. This is an inch and an eighth socket. And I put it there and I am going to hit it with a hammer until we knock that uh, hub out. Let's see how it goes. I hate uh, banging on my sockets like this, but uh, let's try it. Oop, it moved. All right, that knocked out pretty easily. Very good. This is the hub that we just knocked out. If you look, it still has the race on it. Um, this race is kind of uh, difficult to get off. You uh, need some type of uh, die grinder and an air chisel or a hand chisel. Um, if you have no way of getting this off, I suggest just buying another uh, hub. They're only about $35, $40. As you can see, I have clamped the hub into my vise. I'm preparing to force off the race. There's two ways you can do this. One, you can cut a diagonal slot right across here um, and take a hammer and chisel and just break it. It'll come right off. The problem with doing it that way is you're going to damage the uh, surface of the hub itself. Um, it's not a major problem if you damage it. You can clean it up with a little emery cloth. This is not a sealing surface, nor is it a moving surface. It's uh, a press surface. So um, if you do damage it a little bit, put a nick in it, 
uh, do some emery cloth to uh, clean it up and it's okay. Um, the way I do it is I put a little slot right here not deep enough so I'm going into the hub but just a little slot right there just enough to get my um, air chisel uh, something to work with and I just drive it out with an air chisel. I'm ready to cut a little slot into the race so I can drive it out with my air chisel. Um, at this time probably should be wearing safety glasses probably should have been wearing safety glasses all along anytime you're using any kind of uh, hammer or impact tool or power tool you should have safety glasses on so right now I've got my safety glasses on and we're going to cut a little slot into this race folks I apologize I was not able to actually show cutting into the race uh, believe it or not just as I was about to make the cut as you saw um, I had a camera malfunction the battery went dead and because of the noise of the grinder I did not hear it so I did not get uh, to film the actual making of the cut but you can see the slot that I did indeed make it wasn't that difficult I'm now ready to attempt to drive off this race um, at this point you should still be wearing your safety glasses and what you want to do is uh, use a air chisel that has a little, um, I don't know if I got this lined up with the camera or not, a little, little V groove in it. That's helpful. And also it's uh, slightly curved. Okay, uh, I got that out enough. You can see it cracked and broke. Um, I was expecting that. This is where this little V groove helps. Now I can get behind here and drive it the way out. Ah. I'm going to take this opportunity to knock out the seals. This particular um, knuckle has uh, bearing has seals. Um, some of the new ones do not. So I'm going to uh, try to knock out the seal on the other side. I'm going to put a screwdriver in here on it, give it a few good whacks, and that seal came right out. Then what I'm going to do is uh, turn the thing over and. Uh, knock out the seal from the other side. If I can clamp it on something. Doesn't really matter how it's supported. I just want to get at that other seal. A lot of old grease in there. Someone had uh, loaded it up with extra grease. Um, these are supposed to be self-sealed uh, bearings. You shouldn't have to do that. Let's see if I can get on that get on that bearing from this side and knock that one out and that one's out so it's much easier to knock these out from the opposite sides if you saw what I was doing I've gone ahead and cleaned this grease out with an old rag so we can access that snap ring um, these snap rings aren't terribly difficult to get out um, if you look there's little slots and the screwdriver fits right into that little slot and that's where you pry to get it up then you take another uh, screwdriver and just kind of lift it around. So let's try it. Um, I'll need a little hammer. All right, I'm back with my hammer. Let's take the smaller of the two screwdrivers. And see, there's that little slot that I was talking about right there. The, hand, the screwdriver fits right into it. You can see, by tapping it down, I'm able to get it in there. And then I can see how I'm prying that. Maybe you can see, a little, get a little closer here. I guess that ain't working too well. All right, so you can see I pried it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take another screwdriver and put it right under, under it. Oops. Didn't help that I dropped my screwdriver. All right, so I've got that pried up, and I'm just going to work it right out by putting another screwdriver right underneath it. See how it's coming out nicely. 
There we have it. It's coming around. And I didn't plan on that happening, but we got it out of there. As you can see, I've uh, repositioned the knuckle in the vise, so it's now upright, so I can use the kit. Um, it is really helpful to have a bench vise. Um, if you don't have one, you can still do it, but it's so much easier if you've got a vise to work with. The kit has these large uh, cylindrical uh, um, adapters and the whole object is you choose one that's bigger than the outside diameter of the uh, bearing and you put a uh, cover on it like so and then you press the bearing from the back end and it falls into the cup. That's the uh, idea behind it. So what you've got to do is you've got to select a cup that is larger than the actual diameter of the bearing. So we're going to uh, look over here and see. This, this is larger, but it, um, there's not a lot of meat here to grab onto. So um, I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to take a one and see if it will fit over. This looks like this will work. This will fit there and um, it's big enough for the bearing to drop into. So we've chosen this, this here and now we have to get a cover to fit it. Okay, we have a cover to fit it. And now we have a, uh, a threaded rod that goes through it. And we have washers to help protect the kit. So this will go just like that. Now on the other side, we have to select a bushing that is smaller than the bore of the uh, knuckle, but is big enough to uh, fit the uh, outer part of the bearing. So I'm going to reposition this camera so you can see the back. Now I've got the camera on the back side. And I've chosen a bushing that fits inside the bore. Easily fits inside the bore and will be used to press that bearing out. So I'm going to uh, place the um, cup as, as, oops, as I showed you before and I'm putting the bearing in the bore, putting the washer on it, and I'm placing a uh, nut on it. Okay, so this, this bearing, hopefully, will be pressed into the cup. Let me uh, show you the side view. So this is the side view of what we're doing. We've got the cup that the bearing is going to fall into. We've got the threaded rod going through and we've got the nut that we're going to turn on the uh, back side. And hopefully this will press the bearing into the cup. I've moved the camera to the uh, back view so you can see what's happening here as I attempt to uh, force this bearing out. Um, I, I, like, a, like you can see, I've got it clamped in my vise. I'm going to use a one and a quarter socket with a big ratchet. And we're going to try to slowly crank this bearing out. It's not going easy. It appears to be not going at all but we're going to stay with it here. There we go. Now it's starting to move. It's kind of tough going at first, but you can see it's slowly moving out of there. 
when I did the other side, it went much easier than this. I'm having to exert a lot of force to get this thing pressed out. But it is indeed going. As I'm pressing it out, it's going easier and easier. I've seen some people online use the air ratchet for this, but I, I don't feel safe doing that. Probably a jam that cup pretty good in there, so we'll have to tap it with something to get it out. But you can see how the bearing is moving out. I'm an old man here. I don't know if I'll hold up. I think I got a long ratchet. I can say as it's getting close to the end, it's going a little easier now. Yep. Looks like we're through. Okay. When we were uh, pressing the bearing out, we used a bushing that was a little bit smaller than the bore diameter, as you can see. Now that we're going to try to pull the bearing back in, we're going to use a bushing that has a slightly larger diameter than the bore. In selecting a bushing to press the bearing in from the front side, we want a bushing that's only going to press on this outside of the bearing. We do not want to stress the center of the bearing because we could damage it. So we want a, um, a inner diameter that will fit inside here and an outer diameter that will only press on the outer part of the bushing and this seems to fit the bill right here. So uh, th this is what we're going to use to uh, press the bushing in. I've now got this set up to start pressing the bearing in. I've put a little lubricant on it. I've also put a little lubricant on my jack screw. Um, as you recall, we've got a, a bushing that's larger than the bore in the back. We get a bushing that's slightly smaller than the uh, bearing, but it's still going to press on the outer part of the bearing. We do not want to stress the inner part of the bearing. So I'm going to start cranking this. I had to put a wrench on the other side to keep the whole thing from turning. And you can see it's moving in quite nicely. We want to move it in far enough so we can get that snap ring back in. That bearing gets there pretty soon, my arm's getting tired. You can see how difficult this job would be without a bench race. And that looks like the end. It's as far as it will go. So hopefully we got enough room to install that snap ring back in. Now that we've got the bearing pressed into the bore, we can go ahead and try to reinstall our snap ring. It's going to be a lot harder putting it back in than it was taking it out. 
For that I'm going to try to use a snap ring plier. I'm going to try to grab it so I can squeeze it. Hopefully it won't go flying across the room. Actually, that went pretty well. So you'll need a snap ring pliers to get that back in. I don't see any other way to do it. Before we can press the hub into the bearing, we must install the outer seal. If we do not do this, we'd never be able to get the seal in. So uh, to press this seal in, I've selected a bushing here that will fit and only press around the outer edge of the seal as to not damage the center. Um, like so. So it fits it quite nicely. So this is how we're going to press this in. So I'm going to put it over the knuckle and we're going to try to press this in without damaging the seal. Looks like it's going in quite well. Yeah, it looks like it's well seated. We didn't damage it. Uh, so that went pretty well. Just to be clear, I've brought out the bearing for the other side. I haven't installed it yet. I want to make sure you understand that when you're pressing this bearing into the knuckle, you press only on the outside of the bearing as not to stress the center. Contrarily, when you're pressing the hub into the bearing, you only want to press from the center, not touching the outer part. So you would find a bushing that fits and presses only the uh, center of the bearing. I think this small one might work. Yeah, see this this will work. So that's the bushing we're going to use to draw the uh, hub into the bearing. Otherwise you'll uh, damage the bearing. So I just wanted to be clear on that. As you can see I've gone ahead and installed the knuckle in the vise and I've assembled the kit. Um, this is pretty much the same procedure that was used to press in the uh, bearing uh, the only difference is instead of pressing on the outer part of the bearing, we're now pressing on the inner part of the bearing. I selected a, a uh, bushing that fit the front of the hub nicely and a bushing that was small enough to only press on the inner part of the bearing. So let's see how this works out. I had to put a wrench on both sides in case it all moves. This is a one and a quarter as we used before. Seems to be going in. And we're just going to bring it in until it stops. We're not putting any stress on that bearing because we're only pressing on the inner part of it. I might add that I've been, haven't mentioned it before, but I've been spraying lubricant on these uh, pots as I've been pressing them in. Seems to be going in pretty well. It's a tight fit as expected. Seems to be going a little easier now. You can see that part of the hub is going over the seal. seems to be it right there. Okay, it looks like that was a success. All that remains to be done on the bench here now is to install the inner seal. Um, then the assembly can be uh, put back on the car. So as the same as the front seal, we selected a bushing that fits around the outer edge of the seal and we're going to tap it in with a hammer. Let's see how this goes. Looks like I got to put the seal first and then put the... feels like it's going to go in. And we'll put the bushing on it. There we go. Make sure it's even. And we're going to try to tap this in. 
Seems to be going in okay. And uh, that looks like it's nicely installed. This steering knuckle is now ready to be installed back on the car. I hope you enjoyed watching how to use the wheel bearing kit. I did not show anything about removing the knuckle from the car or installing it back on the car. There are plenty of videos online that shows how to do that. That's not what this video was about. I just wanted to show the proper use of the ADT wheel bearing kit. So I hope you enjoyed. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching.